Historically, research on women's health focused on reproduction and the breast and what has come to be known as bikini medicine. But we know that women's bodies are very different from men's and different in ways that account for other things besides reproduction. Just think about it. When a woman is pregnant, her whole body changes. It affects the cardiovascular system, it affects her bones and muscles, it affects how her kidneys work, how she eats, her behaviors. The number one killer of women is cardiovascular disease worldwide. Infectious diseases are rampant. There are many more cancers that affect women than breast cancer and ovarian cancer and endometrial cancer. These are all important diseases that really need more investigation into how they uniquely affect women and how they may respond to treatment differently than do men. The mission of the Mayo Clinic Women's Health Research Center is to understand and improve women's health throughout their life. The Women's Health Research Center uh, is an incredibly fertile ground for research because we brought together individuals from multiple disciplines, those who study um, cells in a dish to those that do state-of-the-art imaging in humans with disease. And the ability to bring these individuals together into a room and discuss science, translation, and clinical application is really a remarkable opportunity and a unique learning opportunity. We take a holistic approach to women's health and make sure that we have research that covers all aspects of how a woman's health changes throughout her life. The research that goes on among the investigators that are associated with the Women's Health Research Center include genetic analysis, molecular testing, traditional sort of in vitro or, or cell culture techniques, research on experimental animals which are considered preclinical studies, and then of course clinical trials, the results of which can be translated to patient care. When we hear about precision medicine, we often think about tailoring uh, medicine to the healthcare needs of an individual patient in terms of understanding their genetic code. But actually, sex is a very important part of individualizing medicine, too. Historically, in a lot of genetic studies, the sex chromosomes have actually been excluded, and that's because they're difficult to analyze. A lot of my research focuses on developing analytical tools to fix this problem. I uh, work uh, on studies of addiction and depression and other psychiatric traits that often manifest themselves differently uh, in men and women. So we use things like machine learning methods uh, and also statistical models that allow me to incorporate prior biological knowledge and integrate, integrate data from a variety of sources. My collaborators help to interpret these results and translate it into clinical practice. That's part of what I love about my job, feeling like the uh, contribution that I'm making is not just you know, within my office uh, in the confines of my computer, but that it actually uh, may touch uh, the lives of patients. I find it very rewarding and fulfilling to have the opportunity to communicate this science. Historically, racial ethnic minority groups have not participated in research due to several historical improprieties and unethical research practices in the past. The Women's Health Research Center has helped to facilitate our work by forging collaborations with the surrounding African American communities. We've partnered with local African American churches both in Rochester, Minnesota and the Minneapolis-St. Paul area to to develop a cardiovascular health promotion program uh, for the African American faith community. And with our efforts, we have truly changed uh, healthy lifestyle practices of the community and we've improved their overall heart health. Everybody is kind of working towards a common goal of improving women's health. I think imaging with the advanced technology is the tool of the future to understand disease processes, diagnose diseases early and intervene early. We're incredibly interested in the phenomenon of population aging. And there are certain conditions like Alzheimer's disease and certain cardiovascular diseases that tend to affect women more than men. So we're wondering what is it about the fundamental biology of aging that is driving these diseases preferentially in women. With the imaging biomarkers, we can say somebody has Alzheimer's disease pathology in their brain as they're living. So this is, this is really important when we are developing early diagnosis and also when we're developing um, treatments to impact that pathology. 
In 10 years from now, I hope to see that when an individual goes into the doctor's office, that they're viewed as a man or a woman, they're viewed as the cultural aspects of their life that may affect their disease. Targeting and being more precise and individualizing who the patient is and the disease processes in that patient has to improve everybody's health.